deep, uh, not your first UFO conference, but first time speaking at a yeah. conference. Are you yeah. excited? Very excited. <laughs> What's your, give me the thumbnail sketch. What are you going to talk about? Okay, so I'll be suggesting a new field of study and trying to sort of outline how this field would work. So let's look at the current subjects of the universe that we have. We have science, philosophy, math, and language. Uh, those are the four core subjects, right? And each subject des describes a different aspect of the universe. Language is communication. Philosophy is the study of the nature of nature itself, right? The nature of nature. Whereas physics is more, and science in general, is more about the physicality. Um, so the problem, though, is that with the phenomena, it doesn't fit neatly into any of these boxes. It doesn't fit neatly, right, as we all so uh, annoyingly and painstakingly have discovered <laughs> in our own research. It doesn't also fit into parapsychology either, though, or any of those fields. And so I think what we need is an entirely new subject that's dedicated to just the study of the phenomena. If you look at the scientific method and science in general, it really came from the Greeks, and since then, nothing changed for much for, for over 2,000 years, right? So it's time to create our own method, uh, equivalent to the scientific method, tailored to the phenomena. Yeah, because so much is excluded from the scientific method, the scientific paradigm. Exactly. It just it, don't take it seriously. No, they don't. And, and you know, part of it is this uh, obsession that if we can't repeat it in a lab, it's not real. And, and I think that's such a flawed logic, right? Uh, the universe is so much more complex than that. Um, it hurts people's uh, respect for science, I think, when you tell them, all right, that thing you saw, that's not true. That's not Very real. true. That's a great point. Yeah, it, it, exactly. And what, like, it's a problem if humans start losing trust in their scientists, right? And they start antagonizing them because that's what scientists uh, do to themselves. So you're absolutely right about that. You've learned a lot. You've had a crash course in ufology and what the <laughs> sociology of ufology is like, right? Yes, sir. I mean, yeah, it, absolutely. It can be incredibly hostile. Yes. Right. Oh, oh, absolutely. I've dealt with some nasty trolls. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it, 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 you know, you try to brush it off, but it hurts. It sticks, right? Yeah. Sometimes it certainly does. What are you even hit with? I mean, they don't know who you are, right? You're yeah. a newcomer. Yeah. You um, have a lot of followers and yeah. fans who are interested in your perspective. Yeah. And that threatens some of the people who have been around for a while. Uh, I could see that, yeah. <laughs> so, so I think the two most common things is the first one is uh, some people were saying that um, I'm just doing this for attention, like I'm trying to publicize myself. Um, and I think like that's flawed logic because there's a million different ways I could have done that. Um, it, it, it's silly to think that me making up a story about aliens, for example, is how I would want to be known. Uh, it's just not. I, I'm doing it because it's time to remove the stigma. And it happened to me. Like I can't lie to myself and other people. Uh, yeah. I'm going to ask you about your sure. experience in a moment. But was that what drew drew you to the topic? Your experience, or were you already interested? I was already interested, but not nearly as much as I was after the experience. So I had taken on an interest about three months before this experience happened, um, and that's why, like it. It was in, yeah, it, it was, uh, so, by the way, my first tweet um, that, so, I was on Twitter for, um, before this whole UFO stuff, I was tweeting about other stuff, like physics, business stuff, engineering, and uh, my followers were specifically just physicists and some venture capitalists in there. And I remember how nervous I was the first time I put out a tweet related to UFOs. And you know what that first tweet was that I put out? It was uh, about how I believe Bob Lazar and uh, hashtag Lazar Truth. Oh and I said, like, stigma is for chumps. That's exactly what I said in the tweet. I can imagine the response to that. <laughs> yeah, well, I had private messages. One of my mentors, he was like, what are you doing? Like, this is suicide, <laughs> career suicide. Are you crazy? And now he's actually on my side. Now he sees, like, we talk science. He knows that I didn't actually just randomly turn insane. Like, he still knows that I'm that same person. And um, yeah, he's a very pivotal person in his part of the world too, like one of the top physicists. So you, you join the conversation, you expand the boundaries of it, you tell people I'm interested in this, yeah. here's what I think, and then it's like the universe reaches out and grabs you by the throat. Tell me <laughs> about the experience. Basically, yeah, yeah. so, so um, I'm working in my room. So, uh, I run my own little company, right? And so I try to get all the admin work, all the you know, work I don't like doing out of the way first. So this is 9.40 in the morning, uh, and I'm, I'm in my room, just like sitting against my headboard and sending emails on my laptop. Uh, and I put down my laptop for just a second to pick up my phone. And as soon as I do that, I get this like 
I, I, it, it's like I knew exactly what would happen next. That's the weirdest part, uh, one of the weirdest parts about this, is that I, I felt like I knew that I, I'm about to go through an experience and I'm even going to call it an abduction because that's the best word that my brain can come up with. Like these were my, like, I, I, this all came to me within half a second or maybe milliseconds. And then I realized that I couldn't even move uh, and I started freaking out because like when you lose full control of your body, your motor cortex, I'm, that's never happened to me before. Like while being consciously awake and suddenly you just can't do anything. Uh, it was terrifying. I thought that I ran through a bunch of motions. So like my mind was like running very quickly. And like, is this a seizure? Uh, nope, doesn't look like it. My, like I can still like move my eyes and stuff. I'm not convoluting or anything or convulsing. Um, am I dying? Um, and so I scanned the room just with my eyes for like, like I did about two scans. And then by the time I get to my third scan, I see this shimmering object. Uh, it's like, it, it's a white outline with like these big black eyes. Uh, and initially like I, I thought like, I, this can't be real. Like, uh, it, it, like I can't, uh, I, I must be making this up, right? Like I must be hallucinating this. Suddenly it became completely solid, completely materialized. And I see this being, it's about three to four feet tall. Its head is massive, like probably the head alone was about a foot. Um, very like robotic looking. The whole thing that it was wearing was like one uniform snow white spacesuit. Like it was very pure white with like this golden insigma in the middle that was constantly changing colors. Um, it, it, uh, sorry, not changing colors, changing symbols. Um, and so that whole, that was weird in itself. And suddenly two other beings materialized the same exact way right next to it. And initially when I saw that, I wasn't even that scared. I was more scared that I couldn't move, right? Like I, that was freakier. And I figured, all right, if I look away, these things are gonna be gone. Like I'm, this is, I'm dreaming this or something. And I looked around and I like, look back and now they're just walking around my room like <laughs> they own the room <laughs> and I was terrified I was like terrified and fascinated because I was like holy crap these things are real like these stories I've read they're people might not have been lying that was one of the most profound realizations I had I was like now I'm one of them too this is now I see what they see like now I see why this drives people right um, and so even that, like throughout the whole time that I was still so in disbelief, but it was so real and so in my face that it was still scary, very scary uh, initially. So like I would try to move myself uh, and I couldn't uh, move anything other than my neck. And that was the weird part. So I moved my neck a little bit, uh, just by about an inch. And I feel extremely nauseous when I did that. So like I was fighting like the paralysis, you can say. And as I did this, um, like their craft uh, sort of materializes through my room so like my through my roof so my roof disappears and I can see their craft sort of submerge through the roof and I was like that's not possible um, that it definitely made it seem like either my room was a fake image or that was like a fake image being overlaid uh, across my eyes then I put my neck down a little bit more and suddenly my entire room is gone and all I could see is that I'm inside the entire uh, craft now and I felt super sick to my stomach like very uneasy not out of fear or anything, it just, it was some weird reaction. Um, not sure why I was feeling nauseous. And so I couldn't uh, handle that feeling. So I went back, uh, lift, put my head back down and back, like my room is back up again. And I only see my room and these three beings. And now they're projecting these hieroglyphics. Uh, it was sentences and paragraphs. And it would be like, imagine if I had like subtitles floating in front of me. Um, they were like dark red symbols, it was like, I, c I describe it as a mix of Egyptian and Japanese, and they were just flipping from the bottom up really, really fast, just flip, 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 paragraph, sentence, and it's hovering right in front of my uh, wall, like ab above one of the, their heads. Um, and one thing that I think is worth noting is that there was only one English symbol that was shown about three to four times. Everything else was these hieroglyphs. And what was it? DNA in capital letters. It was, uh, it, it, it was frustrating because I knew that, I realized that even if this is my mind or whatever, they, it knows English, like whatever these things are, but they're refusing to use English words to, like I don't know what this is, you know, it was extremely frustrating. But also I, I was super fascinated. I, I was studying their movements. I was studying like exactly what was going on and trying to like do my best to remember these symbols. Uh, I can only remember expressions because like, Imagine if um, 
I just showed you Chinese for the first time, right? Could you <laughs> yeah. recreate any of the characters? Yeah. I can't. So, um, but the fact that DNA, capital letters, was shown, that really uh, stuck with me. It means that they find it relevant. Uh, Did, was there any communication other than this, the symbols? Was there any mental communication or verbal? So I heard like verbal voices when I was completely, when I'd moved my head completely and I could only see the ship. And it sounded like they were telling me to like relax or calm down. And it was like a female, it was multiple voices, but it was a female one uh, that told me that like it's okay. Um, so that was it. Uh, there was also music that I heard in the middle of the experience, completely out of context, had no meaning to me at all. And it was in like, it was about three or four seconds of some weird like rock genre you can say and the lyrics was the way that I the best way I can describe it is it was like English that was developed in a parallel universe so it sounded like English but not exactly like as if it followed a different uh, evolution of its own um, there was also yeah other than that there was no other way other way of communication that I can say happened how long do you think the experience lasted and it how did it end it felt in in total about 20 to 30 minutes um, yeah, uh, of just like them showing these 3D objects. Like they would sometimes just, there was one part of where my, um, where I'm standing, I thought the experience ended and I'm just standing in front of my fridge, just looking at it and I can feel gravity and I can physically feel like I'm, you know, there. And then suddenly it just stops and I'm back in my own body, like back lying in the bed and seeing them as they're flipping these holograms. I was like, holy crap, I thought this was over. How do they do that? Um, so, so how it ended was uh, the last couple minutes, um, this being uh, like it jumps up on top of my bed and it like I feel extreme euphoria come across like uh, an extreme bliss. Like it, I, the word that came to my mind was oneness, even though that had no meaning to me um, back then. That was the best way that I can describe it. Uh, so they had this like, yeah, I, I'm going through this, like just a bunch of th thoughts. Um, and I don't know, I was in a state of just uh, being where it felt like, uh, I describe it as the universe being sentient, like it was acknowledging my existence. And it felt like I was remembering this, that like I always knew this somehow, uh, or, and I always knew that I would come to this day, that this experience would happen and I would realize this. It was just such a strange, yeah, alien feeling. Seems like it was wanted to get your attention. Okay, you wanted it. You wanted <laughs> pretty, to know. Here you go. Pretty safe to say. Uh, and the real deal is terrifying. Um, it, it, the whole thing was peaceful in the end of the day, right? Like they didn't harm me or anything like that. Uh, um, but to be in that position where you just feel like a complete animal, you have no control. You know, you're like some tranquilized horse. That's like the way that they were treating me. Like that's the. You know, kind of feeling that I got. What do you think about it? Were you physically taken out of your your home and onto a ship, or was it part of you, or an essence of you, or mentally you were taken out? What so, do you think? frankly, um, I think that they uh, live in a deeper reality than ours. That is different than it. it you, we can't reduce it to physical or non-physical. It's something else, and that's what I'd like to talk about in my talk: is how do we approach that? the idea that we might be, like consider dreams, right? Like um, I mentioned before, um, if we follow just quantum physics, the most stringent interpretation of it, we can only say that whatever we measure is the only thing that exists. And so if you're in your dream, if that's the only thing you can measure, your dream characters, that's all that exists. You can't say that, you know, the real world exists still because you can't prove it. You can't prove it to your dream characters. You need a new, I guess you do need a new scientific model to be able to deal with things that are exactly. outside these very rigid guidelines. Exactly, exactly. So it's so hard to say for me to, yeah, that I was either in my room or in their ship. It feels like it could have been either or or none. And so, and I think it was ne neither. Well, they wanted to make an impression. I guess they did. Uh, <laughs> they did. It kickstarted all of this. You know, I, guess like you I could, wouldn't be here. If you that could had use the happened. term alien, and yeah. people think alien or ET, but. It, not necessarily. No, not, not at all. And that, that was one of the things that was constant, like, uh, it came to my mind a few times. I was like, are these really aliens? Like, they look like them, sure, but there's an etheric aspect to it. Like, everything is very aesthetic um, with them. And it just seems so weird. Like, they could sometimes phase in and out of our world. They could be, like, somewhat translucent to completely solid and real. It, it was very strange. You have a company in, yeah. in Canada and yeah. you deal with investors. You're in the, uh, yes, sir. Are, is there a risk there of mixing these two? 
huge risk. Yeah, so for example, um, when you're raising money, the investors do crazy amounts of due diligence. They do technical due diligence. They get their chief scientist to look at your technology, see if you actually know what you're talking about. They look at your online presence. Are you a controversial character? All of these things come into mind. And so when, when I'm going to raise my next round, right? I, like, for example, I'm lucky to have raised money for my company from Bloomberg before I got into the whole UFO space. So I, I was at least able to get that. But now if I go, when I go to raise my next round, which will be in a few months, I'll have to answer to the investors that I'm asking money from. You're raising money to do what? What's your company doing? So my company is working with quantum computers and we're researching NISC algorithms. So NISC stands for Noisy Intermediate Scale Quantum. Uh, and so what that means is that we're in the era where we have these metaphorically small quantum computers. They're, they're huge, like physically, but they can't compute a lot of information and they can't store a lot of information. Um, and all the calculations done on them are somewhat noisy. So what we research in any um, company in the field right now is what can we do with these devices? We know they're doing something unique. We know that they're processing quantum information, but how can we apply it to the real world? So my company researches different ways of doing that and we act as like research consultants.